Sony 11 millimeter is a compact wide angle prime for Sony APS-C cameras. This lens is great for vlogging, landscapes, cityscapes, and just general walking around photography and videography. If you don't like lugging around heavy cameras and you are a fan of wide angle images and you still want some bokeh and great low light capabilities, this is a great lens to check out. The 11 millimeter costs 548 USD and it is a 16.5 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. It weighs 6.4 ounces and measures 2.6 by 2.3 inches, a very lightweight kit that will take up little space in your bag. The build quality of the 11 millimeter is kind of plasticky, but I suspect they did that to keep costs and weight down, which in my opinion is a benefit. It is still of good build quality and it looks really well matched for these APS-C Sony bodies. Um, it's not a G Master quality, but then again, it's also not a G Master price. There is some weather sealing on this lens around the edges, but I would trust this in like a mist or maybe a light rain. If it starts to rain heavily, I would definitely not trust this weather sealing, but it is nice to know it's there if you need it in a pinch. This lens has seven aperture blades, a 55 millimeter front thread, a focus ring, a focus hold switch, and a manual focus autofocus toggle switch. The autofocus of the 11 millimeter 1.8 is snappy and you can definitely rely on the autofocus of this lens. Since this lens is so wide, you'll probably rarely be rack focusing from a subject that's super close to far away. But if you do, to try to get some bokeh for example, I would suggest trying to keep the subject in the center of the frame because if you get the subject towards the edges of the frame, there is some pretty heavy distortion with this lens though. The good thing is this lens doesn't hunt for focus and if you use the tap to focus feature on the A6600 for example, it does a very smooth focus to each subject. I was very happy with the autofocus performance with the 11 millimeter, even if you're going from a minimum focusing distance to tens of feet away. For photography, the 11 millimeter has done well for me with the street photography I was doing with it. And another good thing with video for this lens, this lens is silently focusing, so you can go throughout the focus range and you'll never hear it even in a quiet room. The sharpness and image quality on the 11 millimeter 1.8 is sharp in the center throughout the entire aperture range. At 1.8, the center is nice and sharp, but the edges are a little bit softer, but they still do retain pretty good contrast. The corners sharpen up around f2 and f2.8. This lens is so wide though, you'll probably have distortion issues in the corner of your images before you run into soft images. So just another reason to keep the subject in the center of the frame when you're using this lens. The 11 millimeter has great flare control for being such a wide angle lens. There's a lot of points for light to enter this lens. And if you're pointing the lens directly at a light source, there will be a little bit of flaring, but it is pretty well controlled. If you're moving this lens away from a light source, it actually has a really nice flare fall off. For these tests, I wasn't using the included lens hood, so this is about as worse flaring as you can get when you're talking about light coming in the lens from the side. For chromatic aberration with this lens, I haven't been able to find much in high contrast areas. Wide open, you may be able to find some color fringing in the corners especially, but if you're pixel peeping, you might be able to find a little bit, but if you zoom out to 100%, I really haven't been able to find much chromatic aberration with this lens. Getting out of focus bokeh balls is possible with this lens, but you'll have to be a little bit closer to your subjects to have the background completely blurred out. A great feature of this lens though is the minimum focusing distance. This lens can focus 4.7 inches away from the sensor or just about two inches over away from the front of the lens. Going back to that bokeh section, this is going to help you get the most bokeh and blurred out background you can possibly get by getting really close to your subjects. If you're doing this, however, take into consideration that distortion the edges of the lens will have. Um, this might be fine for landscapes or cityscapes, but if you get really close to a person and their part of their face or their body is distorted towards the end of the lens, they're probably not going to appreciate that very much. The 11 millimeter 1.8 is a great addition to the APS-C line of Sony lenses. There's been a lot of new lenses lately, but they've mostly been for full frame cameras. But if you like a small lightweight package that still has some great glass in front of it, this is a great lens to check out. It's great for low light situations, capturing wide city or landscape photos, but it is also great with video with the fast autofocus and that really close minimum focusing distance. I'm not really into astrophotography, but this lens being so wide 
fast and not having a lot of chromatic aberration would probably be pretty great for astrophotography as well. If you like shooting ultra wide photos with an ultra light and ultra small footprint, the 11 millimeter 1.8 is a great addition to your bag. If you want something a little tighter, I have a video about the 15 millimeter G APS-C lens. And I also have a video about the 10 to 20 power zoom lens. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.